Hey, John, how you doing? Um, is the sound okay, John, in the uh, video? Everything okay? <clears throat> John? <laughs> Somebody say something. Yeah, I'm gonna. I, I think I'm gonna have to take the front, the the very few, the very front part out of all the videos. Uh, okay. Um, hey, Dominic, how you doing? Sound all right? Video okay? Gotta know, guys. Dominic, did, did you tell me that you bought a um, a Prince, a Rolex Prince? Somebody told me. I think it was you, wasn't it? Or it was somebody else? Let me tell you, I I, I think I mentioned this in, in a comment that I wrote to you, but, but the guy from the... <laughs> yeah. Uh the guy who from the Horological Society of New York, I mentioned this to you, who taught the course that they had is sort of this big weekend course on uh on watchmaking. That was a watch that he had. Had had the uh, had the prints. And I've always liked that watch. I mean, it's just like it's I, I always see a bunch of Rolex um, uh, watchmakers and designers and stuff, and Rolex keeps them in a cage. <laughs> it doesn't let them out to do really creative stuff like the Prince. The the way in which the Prince has the uh, the engraving on the front, and then it's followed on the back. The way they have the, this beautiful movement that they have. Uh, I think it's three hertz too. Uh, hand wound, what a beauty that thing is! And then, of course, they have an exhibition window in the back. But that was just not what most Rolex buyers wanted. And to me, it's a shame because I think that you know Rolex could afford to you know take some chances and sort of go off the reservation a little and try some new stuff. Oh my God! Yeah, the yellow gold gold movement. That's just a knockout. Hey, uh, Jonathan and Tim, and uh, how you guys doing? Uh, I've been, I, I've talked about this a little before, and, and what I wanted to do, I thought we could all sort of bring our stuff together today to talk about selling a watch and sort of the do's and don'ts of selling a watch. Uh, some years ago, there was a guy, I don't know where he was located. Hi, Hater. Uh, but he was somewhere, and he would order these watches. People would send him their watch, and he'd never pay him. And he got a bunch of watches that way. And so, yeah, there's, there's someone says, well, you want, you want a warning. Be sure the person is going to pay you. But uh, one of the things that I think, if, if I, I've seen this so often, uh, hey, Truman, uh, is the whole issue of how you present your watch. It's It takes like, you know, I, I've seen a lot of watch. They got, you know, they take pictures of them. They, uh, they're out of focus. That's one thing. People trying to sell a watch that's out of focus. Uh, they're, they got fingerprints all over the dial. I mean, I mean, this is. This is this is what you should do if you're going to sell a watch. You, you clean it off first. Hey, Javi, how you doing? I mean, like, a, and so many watch. I mean, people is that like you? You know, we're dealing with things that are thousands of dollars, and people treat them like they're, you know, selling a a, a used, you know lawn statue, a lawn troll or something. 
anyway, that's, so I would say that's that's my first contribution, my first tip. If you're going to sell your watch, take a nice picture of it and have it all cleaned up and everything. It takes you five or ten minutes, and that's it. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, I I can imagine. Hey, Thomas. Um, so I don't know. That's one thing. Another thing that, um, that they do that bothers me is they don't tell you about the movement. Now, there may be a reason for that and that there's, you know, it's a cheap movement and some kind of watch are trying to unload, but a lot of times it's not. A lot of times it's really got a good movement in it. Uh, I was, I'm still wearing, I had this on this morning, my, um, H. Moser, uh, Henry Double Hairspring. And I was looking at some, so I was looking at some, what they had left. I think there were two that they had for sale on um, Chrono 24. And then they had a lot of those Alpine watches. Now, I think some of the Alpine watches have double hairsprings. Some don't. And, and not very many do. And so I was looking at them and I was trying to tell and they have, you know, all they have to do is put HMC 324. That's the, that's the name of the movement. And you know, it's a double hair spring, but not these guys. They leave them blank either. I, I don't know. Like, it, I, I don't know if you've ever bought or sold a house. Uh, the last house that my wife and I sold God, it's going on 25 years ago, I guess. Uh, there was a, um, the realtor said, well, you know, this you could do this to it and you could do this to it to really make it look a lot nicer. And we did, and, and we had no problem selling it. I mean, but just little things like, uh, you know, like mow the yard. And the same thing with your, your watch. Another thing you can do, if you've got a band that's just all ripped up and terrible, you can you can save the uh, the buckle on it because a lot of times like this one has a buckle that has uh, H Moser on it and get a good band for it. Now you say, well, you know, I don't want to have to you know dump a couple hundred bucks into a band. If you can sell a a watch for a couple thousand bucks more because it has a good band, I think that would be something to consider. Um, hi, Velvia man, how you doing? Um, so th this is the, the, those are, you know, like just the preparation of it. You know, the other thing I've been thinking a lot more about, um, yeah, do <laughs> exactly right. Uh, the other thing is, it, it, and, and I think another point that, um, Dominic has is you can save money. <laughs> Somebody has a crummy photo. So, oh, your watch looks terrible. I don't want to buy that. Uh, some sellers put the watch on a holder, take photos, and don't bother to remove the holder to show the back. They do that all the time. These are my little, these little watch stands you can get from uh, Amazon. You know, you have a, they'll take a picture and what you can see of the movement is is barely anything. It's not rocket science. It takes like, you know, maybe add five whole minutes more of your day to really show off your watch. You know, I'll tell you another thing, too, that I found out. In addition to uh, to shining up your, your dial and, of course, your, the rest of it, if you do that to your uh, band, put a little shine on your band, and it looks a lot better than a dull band. I mean, that's I mean, somebody jumping, you know, they spilled beer all over their band, and, you know, that, that can happen. And it's sort of cruddy looking, and they just... You polish it up a look a little and it looks fine. I think new bands and original bracelets are important. Yeah, I the original bracelets, I only have one watch with a bracelet, and it has such a good bracelet. I haven't bothered to get another one with a bracelet. All of mine are have bands on it. Um I used to do something and I quit doing it. Uh I used to get what I call beater bands. And a beater band, I go out and get some cheap band and uh, you know that look good and put it on my my watch and then save my good bands for you know when I was <laughs> going out and putting on the dog. 
I didn't realize that, you know, I didn't do it that much. First of all, there's not many dogs to put on. And second of all, why not have a nice band, um, you know, when, when to enjoy it yourself? Man, you have to wait to show off to somebody. Um, a bit of good detail. Do you know, John, that is something I have bought a watch because of. Uh, and and it's and it's and I agree. It's very important if you have something about it that is will tell you something that uh, like it has a special um, constant force element in it. Boy, that would you know prick my ears up. Um, when when I used to when I belonged to the Rolls Royce Club, my job was to check out um, stories about who who people bought their cars from. And uh, I'd get all of these guys that send in something. They said, well, like, the guy that I bought it from said that uh, my Rolls was previously owned by Gary Cooper, or one of the old movie stars or something. And my job was to check it out. And most of them, it wasn't. It wasn't that the person had made it up, uh, but the person selling it said, well, I'll, I'll tell them Gary Cooper owned it or somebody, you know, some one of the old movie stars. And um make it more interesting that way. Well, they did it for that reason. And so what you're saying about some details, they should be true, but I think that's a, that's an interesting case. Yeah. You know, Thomas, that's a, that's a good point. There's, there's another thing that people will find the most camouflage looking cloth or put it on their bedspread or something like that. Um, and you know, take a picture of it. Well, that sort of messes things up. What I have, let me show you what I've got here. I've got a bunch of uh, of of mouse pads that I that I had made. They got my different watches on it and so forth. But uh, this one has a, a Harry Winston watch on it, and a friend of mine who's very artistic, which I'm not, uh, put this together. I always liked it because uh, the colors and everything went together. But I wouldn't put a watch on this. Let's say I wanted to sell a, uh, a oh, which one I'm thinking of. Uh, I have this one Daniel Roth um, that I'm thinking of of selling. I wouldn't put it on here or here or here. First of all, it's a different watch. Second of all, it'll camouflage. A nice, plain, solid color, anything will do. You know, and that's you know to take a picture of it. Put the watch on a rock. Hey, Owen, how you doing? Hi, Mark. Um, yeah, Dominic, I have I have mouse pads for all kinds of my watches. I got them all over here. Uh, I live in a. I I can't help myself. There's this place called Vista Print, and every now and then they have a special, and so I go out and. I buy a bunch of mouth pads. Hi, Velvia man. Original crown is important to me on a vintage watch. If they do not show that side of the case. Yeah, you know, anything that is going to help the person make an honest decision. Now, a lot of times the person selling it isn't aware of those kinds of things. Be careful about photos. Had a guy send me a photo of the watch, paperwork, and box prior to purchase, but when received the watch, they had omitted the box had gone missing. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's, oh, and you're right. That, that's something, you know, this is something else that's really funny uh, that, you know, you have these, and it's sort of getting into a little fraud now, but um, people really worry about, Oh, it's a counterfeit Rolex. Those are some, uh, and now they have these super counterfeits that are really hard to tell. Okay. Um, but they really say, well, I really want, want my paperwork. Look, with my laser printer, I could print up <laughs> just about any document I wanted to. You know, a little Photoshop here and <laughs> arrange it. Not hard to do. Uh, that's how come I don't give that much credence to paperwork. And, and oddly enough, some of the paperwork, I have a um, an F.P. Jorn from 2000, 
seven, I think. And my paperwork is this little card with a holographic thingy on it and some information on the back. And that's the paperwork. And that turns out to be the, the important paperwork. Um, so yeah, that, that can be, that can be dolled up. Uh, so you, yeah, that, that can happen. But now selling your watch, that's what you want to do, Owen. You <laughs> get it all fixed up and have a, I don't know, any box. Yeah, you know, something, uh, um, I have a, a wardrobe and, it, and it's full of watch boxes because I once I get a watch, I'll put it in my case and the, uh, the, the original box for it and some of them are unwieldy. My two favorite boxes and one I don't have. Uh, one is the uh, Harboring 2. Harboring 2 has this wonderful wooden box, and it's got this little sliding wooden door that opens. And then inside, they put in an extra mainspring, a really amazing stuff in that little, that, that, that they send you. But, you know, it, it's it's about a little bigger than what they Same thing with uh, FP Jorn. They got a nice little box. Uh, so if you sell on your watch and you want to show them the box, that would be it. My Vassarone Constant 10, uh, 1921, it comes it comes with this, looks as big as a dollhouse, this, and it's a two-story box. I don't know. Best trick is the photos that are five to ten years old that had happened to me a couple. Oh, that's interesting, yeah. Um, <laughs> I think people who are... Uh, engaged in dating apps find that to be true too. <laughs> um, they get these old pictures. Um, okay, so you want to sell your watch, so you want to fix it up, you want it to make it look nice. And let's say that uh, you have some ethics about it, so you want to show everything that they have. Now, what is the the place that I've had the best luck, and I've gotten the most from selling a watch? They, they take their sweet time paying you, but they do pay. And this is an auction. Um, I got double, literally double what I thought I was going to get for this watch uh, at an auction. I mean, I sold it through Sotheby's. Now, these are, you know, Sotheby's, um, Phillips, and Christie's. I think are the big three watch options uh, auctions where they have real expensive watches. And I think some people, you know, you got to watch it, you know, not crazy expensive. And, you know, somebody at an auction, you know, they're looking to buy something, they'll buy anything at some point because they get outbid at these really high ones. So you got your little whatever in there. Uh, I had a little Vacheron Constant 10, um, 19, what was it? Uh, 1974. And you know those are they weren't very popular, and the model I had was not very popular at all with men, which was interesting. Uh, and it was the men's model, but the women's model did very well. And so I think, oh, I'm gonna have trouble selling this thing, but mm, I didn't. <laughs> it was went very well. Um, hi, Mr. Gumby, how you doing? <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, so that was that's one source. Uh, I sold the watch through um, Chrono 24. I I suppose it, it, it would. I mean, Chrono 24 worked out pretty well for me. Uh, I didn't make I didn't make a you know a killing on it, and I got pretty much I got more than I had paid for the watch, which was you know wasn't a lot more, but it was something. How about you guys? Have any of you had a, either a really good or really bad experience with uh, some of these more, I mean, either auction or Chrono 24 or eBay or some other self uh, point that you've had? Tim's drinking again. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm trying to think of some other. Oh yeah, uh, another selling place. I belong to one that I haven't really been very active in. It. They have these groups or clubs, and you can sell it through them. That a bunch of guys uh, who are in the same club, and somebody 
uh, wants to sell a watch and somebody then somebody else says, well, does anybody know this guy? Can you vouch for this person? And it's, it's sort of an interesting uh, kind of way to do things. And I suppose you do cut out the middleman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Never sold any watches. I, I, the watches that I've sold, oh, I'll tell you, they want to know the worst way to sell a watch? Trade in. That has got to be the absolute worst way to sell a watch is trade in. I mean, if you're a seller. Um, hi, Mr. Berger. Just bought a new Bremon, about half the price. It was, it was seamless and fast. So that's nice. Uh, Mr. Berger, where did you get that from? Since we're talking about selling watches, but this is interesting. Is this with Bremont's new in-house <laughs> movement? I'm trying to think, of course. You know, there are people, the, the flippers. Uh, I, I'm really not talking about flippers. Um, you got on Chrono 24. Okay, yeah. I bought more, a lot more watches than I've sold uh, on Chrono 24 and on um, uh, eBay. Specify size of watch, eliminating returns. Big difference between, yes, 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 yes. Good point, John. Um, I bought a watch from a guy on eBay, and the the band was had been shortened because the person who had it, I guess, previously, had a had a smaller wrist, and so he thought it was a good idea to cut the end of the band off. <laughs> so anyway, I ended up with this uh, short band, but I knew about it. The guy had told me about it, and so I didn't really get too upset. Uh, unfortunately, it was one of these watches that's very, very hard to uh, replace the band. Uh, so it was either I go on a diet <laughs> and get a smaller wrist or get a bigger band. I'm working on the band. Um, yeah, selling, I, I think, too, one of the things I think in preparing to sell a watch, um, you, you really, I, I would really suggest spending some time looking at watches like the one you're selling for, for what you want to price it at. Uh, some people price them really too high and some are really too low. Let me add to that. If you really need the money, it's not the time to sell a watch. I mean, sell them when, when you don't need the money that much. Uh, because a lot of times I think people will take, you know, some a lot of wise guys will lowball. I'm one of them. <laughs> every now and then, well, have it throw an offer out there. And, and every now and then, somebody takes him. This one guy, I offered half of what he was asking, and he said, sure. It did it right away. There was something else, too, that was sort of interesting that I, that I ran into. And that has to do with uh, this guy, and it had to do with a smaller band. But this guy took, um, uh, what are they called, uh, links out of his uh, metal band. And it was advertised as that. The guy selling it was advertised and had a hard time selling it because I guess the person had a very small wrist. Well, I thought, oh, heck, I, I can buy it. I'll give him a, I'll lowball it because he, he'd been having a heck of a time selling it. And then I'll just get a new band for it. And that's what I did. It wasn't too hard. If I buy a Holy Trinity or Lang, uh, wouldn't it be wise to swap it for an unoriginal uh, strap for daily wear? That was what I used to do, Truman. Yeah. Um, no, there's a different. There's a lot of difference between an unoriginal strap and the cheap straps that I use, my beater straps. Um, there, some of my best straps now are not the original straps. Uh, I have a couple from uh, uh, Jean Rousseau, which is a Parisian watchmaker, but they have a office in uh, New York that I can I can get it at, and they have these these gator bands that are just gorgeous way better than the bands that they ship well and when they they don't ship gator bands anymore uh there's another place called ab something uh ab 
something or other, Paris. Um, and they, they make bespoke bands. They make gorgeous bands. And so, but the thing to do is if, if you want a nice band for yourself, <laughs> you can save the, the thing to save that's important is the, um, is the buckle on it. What I did on my Jean Rousseau, I just took the buckle off that came with it and put on, you know, the buckle that went with the watch. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Dominic, exactly. Um, if I don't, I mean, if uh, if I offer something to someone and they say no, I don't get all, you know, oh, come on, you know, you know, give me a deal. I, I don't do that. Just send an offer, they, you know, sort of a take it or leave it thing. And sometimes they take it. And <laughs> why not? Um, I suppose that... I, there's this one I probably ought to buy, or at least give it a shot. Uh, it's at half price of all of the other ones. It's apparently it's new. I'm a little concerned about it. The guy has so much paperwork out there that he's telling you that it's you know the how good it is. Um, but I just don't know. There's you know. I, I think one of the things, uh, if you're selling a watch, you don't want to give anybody any reason to doubt. Uh, doubt is not a good thing <laughs> at all. So that's that's something else. Then when you're setting it up, all of the information you have. Uh, you know, so, somebody who is, there was this one guy, I forgot what he offered me. It was like, the watch was set up for like six or seven thousand dollars. It wasn't that big of a deal, but the guy sent in an offer of one thousand. Well, that's a little ridiculous. I I think that you can lowball something, but if you're smart about it, you won't lowball it to the point where somebody makes it easy to refuse. Um, so with the same thing, when you're selling a watch, uh, I, you know, you look at the thing, the offer it depends. That's why I say you don't want to sell a watch when you really need the money. Because if you really need the money, you probably shouldn't be buying these kinds of watches anyway. But um, yeah, no, I, I uh, Dominic's points, uh, uh, you, you know, you do it nicely. Yeah, you don't have to be a tough guy to, to get better results. Velvia Man, vendors on... Uh, Chrono 24 used to accept offers, even although they said they did not uh, lockdown change that. Yeah, uh, there was this one guy that I got a couple from. What he did was sort of interesting. He did the bargaining for you. He'd put up a price and wait a while and say, hey, I got a special on this one. Knocked it down. I don't know how much, but uh, that was when I bought it. So maybe it, maybe it does have an effect that way. Um, selling a watch, so to me, it it's i don't know uh so far the watches i've sold i have not missed uh because they were in the in my case for such a long time without being worn that i you know that was why i sold I said, i'm not going to wear a wash i'm not going to have it fill up my case for nothing and you know then i can of course buy another watch with it um yeah yeah, a lot of times they say they won't do it. You know, sometimes what you can do, um, and you should do for yourself, if if somebody doesn't tell me the movement or something like that, uh, it bothers me because that, to me that's the heart of a watch. But sometimes they don't know themselves, all right? <laughs> so if you ask them and they don't know, uh, then you better get to work and find out what that, particular watches i like i like to make it easy for anybody buying a watch for me just to say here's all the information i if i have papers this one guy sold it to uh i had these uh papers but i didn't send it with the watch and um because i had i, I wanted to put them in uh, the the paper was uh that i had was flat because it had been sent to me in this really nice envelope and kept it flat. I don't want to wad it up and put it in a 
envelope. So I waited and after I sent him to Washington, so sent that to him. And, and I think if I ever tried to sell the same guy or somebody he knew a, another watch, they'd probably want to buy it. Um, and you're right about that too. I I think that if somebody is reasonable and and polite, uh, I will. I'm much more likely to, as a seller, to say, "Oh, all right, you know, I guess I'll do it." Uh, but I prefer the nasty people because then it's easy to say no. <laughs> Okay, what are some other what is your some other watch selling stories? Like I said, my best watch selling story was simply a, an auction. Um, and you sit there and sweat bullets while you watch see whether or not somebody's gonna put a higher bid on it. But other than that, it, it's a pretty simple uh procedure, it just takes a while. And also too, your best auction houses, they seem to want a very limited range they want something from the holy trinity uh alanga and some of these higher end ones and what happens every now and then where you can get a really cool watch is that somebody who's got this great watch in their collection and they want to sell the whole collection so they go to phillips and they don't say hey will you sell my whatever they say hey i have a collection and uh, if there are some really key ones in it, they'll take some ones that they normally wouldn't have in an auction. And so, you know, if you if you have one that an auction normally wouldn't be interested in, uh, what you can do is you can talk to somebody else who has a watch that they're thinking of selling in an auction and maybe split the auction fees with them or something like that and make some kind of deal so they can sell your, your lesser watch. You have, I'm trying to think uh certain kinds of watches they're not interested in not because they're not good watches that just not a lot of people are interested in there's one that's called the uh, paddock philippe 5111 and uh, i never liked that watch it was, it's a gondolo and i like gondolos but then i saw one and i really liked it I thought, boy that's a it, it comes across in person so to speak a lot better than it does in a picture Tell us the watch has been recently serviced, eliminating lowballing due to service too. You know, that's a good point. I tell you, you know, there's certain, yeah, there's certain ones that I think it's a good idea. I had uh, both of my uh, FP Jorns serviced in 2017. And, but you know, here's, here's a, another thing. If a watch is, you know, and I think they say something every, three years so i'm out five years now on it but the difference is is that i rotate my watches and so you have let's say a watch that gets worn uh once a week uh or even less then you know you can you can the sales pitch is is that you're you're not really getting that much wear and here's why and you can point out that you rotate your watches Mr. Uh, Mr. Berger, uh, I haven't bought or sold anything through the real real, but I've seen some very good buys. And I've been tempted uh, by them a great deal. Uh, should I buy your FPJ or Easter Week 1921? You bet I would fly over the pond to meet <laughs> yeah, face to face. Yeah, on one of those two watches. Um, now, you know, one of the things people... There, there are certain people who, who the, you know, they think that they can talk you into selling a watch that you have. Um, and I just say, you know, it's not for sale, like my FP Jorn Resonance. But then I thought, you know, that's not the thing to do. Uh, it's for sale. Anybody, by the way, anybody listen to this, it's for sale for a million and a half dollars. Well, you know, come up with that. Um, it's yours. And you can fly over the pond <laughs> to pick it up. Uh, but that way, then somebody doesn't bug me about it. <laughs> Is there a time? Oh, it's that time again, pan frying. Oh, okay, frying pan time. Okay, John. Yes, my time is up. Uh, 
And I want to thank all you guys for showing up and having this chat today. Uh, tomorrow is Mother's Day. Don't forget that. Uh, my wife has reminded me. <laughs> so, okay. Take care. Have a good Mother's Day. And um, see you later.